Um, so then we'll move on to our drums here. And so we'll start with the kick. And like I said, all these drum samples, you can find them in my free Synthwave sample pack. Grab that in the description below or go to orpheusaudioacademy.com slash midnight. And so we got the kick here. So pretty simple, have the kick hitting on the one and the three. Simple and the snare hits in between. Uh, which I'll show you in a second. And then I've got this little EQ here, kind of trying to carve out where the snare body would kind of be. Kind of where some boxiness might be on the kick. So for, and also kind of moving some of the clickiness up here, um, but also kind of increasing the air again to help it um, cut through. And we got some British channel here, adding some more EQ, kind of boosting that low end here, boosting the high a little bit at 3.7K, adding a little bit of saturation here with the input and then adding some compression as well. So kind of doing like one to two dB of compression, so very faint. And so again, if you don't have any of these plugins, you can totally like recreate this, right? Just grab an EQ. Uh, I'm using uh, like a channel EQ, channel um, saturation. So you could do this in Logic if you went to like EQ, Vintage EQ Collection, Vintage Console EQ. So if you want to get like the, the drive of this, you would just turn the drive up here. And then here's where your EQ is that I'm using. And then you just throw on some compression. And then I wanted to be a little fatter. So I just threw on some one knob fatter here. Just add some quick fatness. Then I added, added some Super VHS, one of my favorite uh, plugins for Synthwave by Baby Audio here. And you can get 10% off all Baby Audio plugins when you use my code, I believe, OAA at checkout. I have that in the description below. And so this is really cool because you can add some more saturation, which I'm doing here with heat. And then I've got a tape machine on here. So I'm using the T-Rex Tape Machine 99 by IK Multimedia. Just to add some tape warmth. We add some warmth and it kind of, um, I don't know, it feels like it smooths it out a little bit. And so this is really nice here. Any kind of like tape saturation is good to add on your kick. Snares here. So I got two different snares. So I'm using this high snare here. And then add some vintage EQ here. Um, boosting a little bit at 10. Um, get that brightness and then cutting at about 7. K by about a half a dB just to get rid of some of that harshness. And then adding a bit crusher here, very subtle um, here just to help it cut through a little bit. It actually kind of fattens it up a bit and also uh, adds some of that bright end on the top there. And then last thing is an enveloper to remove some of the sustain. Yeah, we're cutting out some of that sustain there. Just removing that tail a little bit. And that's just the uh, enveloper tool here inside of Logic. So any, any kind of plugin you have that can control like attack and sustain. Um, you can use that. Then I have snare two here. I've just got an EQ here. I was cutting the highs and the lows and some of the, the mids there. So this kind of gives the body. And this sample already has kind of some reverb on it. So together you get the nice snappy attack with the top one and then the nice big body with the second snare there. And then on the bus here, we got some Nova again, this is a free plugin, really cool. Um, Multi-band EQ and compressor. And so we're just taming some of the harsh frequencies here. So we're not doing any cutting it looks like, but we're adding some um, compression here. And then we're boosting a little bit here around 10K. And we're doing a little bit of compressing as well. 
just a tiny bit. And then just cutting off the high highs there that we don't need. And we got some more EQ here. I guess that was just a little too muddy. I want to give a tiny bit of punch and then a little bit too harsh as well. So I cut a little bit up there together without these in and with them in. So definitely you can hear it really controls the snare better, not as harsh, um, just a lot more controlled. And then we sent this to a bus, bus three, where I've got some um, space designer here, um, just a big plate on here. And you can kind of see the settings here. Um, so this is where you kind of would want to put your gated reverb. Um, this isn't technically gated, but the way space designer kind of really cuts off the tail here, it's almost acting like a gate. And then it's a pretty short length. Um, so we can hear what this sounds like. So you can hear it really falls off at the end there. And then I got a little bit of EQ on this. I'm just cutting some of those highs. And then roll off the low end. So this is the an EQ on the reverb uh, bus. And then I've got another bus here, sending it to this chroma verb, which is like a room reverb. So I'm kind of just applying a room reverb to the snare as well. So if we turn off the big one. Okay, I just like a bright crispiness. That's nice, and then with the other reverb. Not bad, right? And so all right, you might want to tweak this a little because it sounds a little bit artificial, but you're not going to really notice it in the mix, but you can like mess around with the length here. That might sound a little bit more natural, but obviously you got to hear it in the context of the whole mix to really know what's going on there. And then we've got these hi-hats going on. Um, just found a couple of samples. And so I just put the sample in twice, and then the second one I just turned down the gain. So it sounds a little bit more realistic, like you're playing it, like one hit is louder than the other one's quieter. And the same thing with this hat. Pretty straightforward. And then the second hat here, we're sending this to that same room verb. Um, then we've got these claps here. A pretty simple clap sample, just got some of the same Bit crusher on it that had it on the snare. And then again, we're sending it to this chrome of room verbs. We're kind of sending all our drums to. So without it in, pretty dry. So it has a nice bright splash. And then we got this fatter clap up here. Um, again, all these samples are in my free sample pack. And here I added some tube compression. I just use this drum smash preset and then adjusted, I believe, the output here because it was like really boosting that. So we can hear what this does. Not bad. Kind of really pulls up the tail there so we can see with the slower attack, that's grabbing that tail and pulling it up. Then we're adding some low pass EQ here. Make it a little darker, it's not quite as bright and brittle. And I do have a crash here. It's kind of more of an effect, transition effect. And I don't have anything on there. It's just a sample. Oh, wait, we've got toms down here. Some samples, some tom samples from my pack. And I have this EQ on here. So we're really kind of cutting out the lows and just kind of keeping those high bright parts so it can really punch through the mix. Nice. And then we got some Base designer in here again. I think I chose like a big plate or something. Originally, this is a preset I made. So really big reverbs. Obviously, you can tame that and adjust that to your preferences. And then lastly, I add some tube saturation here to kind of excite it more and warm it up a bit. So it kind of thickens up the the reverb there. And again, you don't have to use, if you don't have waves, you can use any kind of like tube saturation, like vintage tube EQ here in Logic. So you could just pull the drive up here. 
and not use the EQ. And then we got the drum bus here. So I am using Studio Rec here to control a couple different parameters from a couple different waves plugins, one on filter and smack attack. So I can control the attack and sustain here. So this is what the smack attack, I just got these macros mapped just for a little easier control in here. And so I'm reducing the attack a bit and increasing the sustain a bit on these drums. So we'll hear what this sounds like. Very subtle. Then I'm adding some tape saturation to the whole kit. I'm using another tape machine by IK Multimedia here. The tape machine 24. And we're increasing the high uh, frequency EQ here and the low frequency here. Then we got some vintage EQ here, boosting at 12K here by about half a dB, and then cutting at 3.8 to remove some of that harshness by quite a bit here. Drums are starting to sound a lot more glued together now, but this is really gonna help here. The bus compressor by IK Multimedia that I'm using here. Um, Waves also has a good one, the SSL. That's what this is based on. And so this is just gonna help glue the drums together here. So very, very, very subtle there, but you can hear it kind of pulls everything together, pulls it forward a little bit. And then we're adding, finally, some parallel aggressor here. It's another baby audio tool. So we're adding some parallel compression and some parallel saturation here. Um, so this is where you can control the parallel compression. This is where you can control the level of the parallel saturation. So this is how much you want to dial in. And this is then the amount of it. So like how much heat and how parallel it is. If that makes sense. So um, uh, turning on, uh, putting a high pass on here so that we're not messing up that low end. So you can hear it really thickens up the drums and makes them a bit more punchy, uh, which is a really nice effect there. So I got some really nice punchy drums. And so we can compare those uh, alongside the bass we have going on. And now we have a good synthwave track going on here. And if you want to, right, you could add a filter or a pumper or like sidechain compression to the bass if you want it to be a little bit more bouncy and groovy. but I'm gonna keep it very, very subtle here. Be sure to download my free Synthwave sample pack in the description. Not only does this contain over 180s drum and effects samples, but it also includes my Synthwave sound design cookbook, which includes step-by-step -step recipes for creating your own Synthwave sounds. And it includes my Synthwave mixing cheat sheet, which breaks down specific mixing techniques you can use to get that retro Synthwave sound every single time. Again, this is all free in the description below, or you can go to orpheusaudioacademy.com slash starter pack. If you found this video helpful, be sure to blow up that like button like you're Luke Skywalker attacking the Death Star. And if you want more help creating Synthwave music, be sure to click the video playing on the screen right now, as this includes my full in-depth tutorial on creating a Synthwave song from start to finish. With that, have an awesome day and keep creating.